Hello, it's time for French Politics here on France 24. I'm Mark Perlman. And I'm Molly Hall. Coming up in today's show, a standoff in Mayotte. Security concerns and illegal immigration spark weeks of protests in the French Overseas Department. And the National Front is no more. But will a change of name be enough to revive Marine Le Pen's struggling far-right party? Plus, the government squares off with trade unions. This as it begins the tricky process of railway reform. Mayotte, if you've never heard about it, it's the name of two tiny islands off the coast of East Africa that happen to be a French department. However, for the past few weeks, Mayotte has been rocked by a general strike and a wave of protest over the lack of security prompted largely by illegal immigration. To fully understand this crisis, let's take a look at the specificities of Mayotte. Now, Mayotte is located near Madagascar and part of an archipelago known as the Comoros. Back in 1974, all the Comoro Islands voted to become independent, well, except for Mayotte. The Comoros are one of the world's poorer nations, and as a result, Mayotte has become a magnet and its population doubled in the last 20 years. Uh, that's true. And uh, what we see today is that over half of the people currently living in Mayotte were actually born elsewhere, mainly in the neighboring Comoros Islands. And according to the French government, some 45 percent of immigrants in Mayotte are in an illegal situation. In addition, uh, if you look at the poverty uh, rate, it is 84 percent and unemployment is three times higher than in mainland France. However, the GDP per capita remains 13 times higher in the Comoros. Now, this situation has really boiled over a few weeks ago. This one, locals urged Paris to uh, just put more resources and pay more attention to the situation on the island, starting with maternities. Now, Ellen Gainsford has the story. In this hospital in Mayotte, three in four babies are born to illegal immigrants women who hope to secure French citizenship for their children. To tackle the issue, the French government proposes giving the maternity hospital extraterritorial status. A month of benefit payments on Mayotte is the equivalent of a year's wages on a neighboring island. It's a unique set of circumstances we need to consider. That's the thinking behind the plan to confer extraterritorial status to maternity hospitals on the island. But back in Paris, not everyone is on board with the idea of a separate set of laws for overseas regions. There shouldn't be a lesser set of rights for French territories which are far from France. I think that sends a bad message. That's why I won't change my stance on this issue. While the right-wing party Les Républicains want to go even further, changing the law concerning immigration rights on the entire island. The truth is that the government doesn't have the courage to address the real issue. The question of immigration on the whole island, we can clearly see the problems there are now. This extraterritorial plan is actually going to create more difficulties and tension than there is already. It's part of measures aimed at easing unrest in Mayotte, where residents have been protesting, spiraling crime and strained public services. During her visit, the French Minister for Overseas Territories also announced plans for police reinforcements and increased migration patrols. Next to a facelift for the National Front, Marine Le Pen has proposed changing the name of her far-right party. At the annual conference, the members backed the swap to Rassemblement National, or National Rally. This in a bid to reinvigorate the struggling party. This weekend, Marine Le Pen rebranded the National Front. I propose that the National Front become the National Rally. This divided reactions from Marine Le Pen supporters to former party royalty. For me, it's good, clean, dignified and respectable. If this is simply to change the National Front's name, I'm very hesitant. In her closing speech, Le Pen tread a line between advocating a more palatable brand for the party and the fiery nationalism it's known for. The name National Front has a glorious history. 
But you know it is, for many people, a psychological red flag. This is the latest touch to the party's makeover, a continuing effort to recover from Le Pen's resounding loss to Emmanuel Macron in last year's election. The changes aren't all cosmetic. Le Pen also revoked her father Jean-Marie Le Pen's title of honorary president for life and barred him from attending the Congress. Since taking over, Marine Le Pen has tried to scrub out the party's racist image while keeping their anti-immigration agenda. But another rift may be forming in the family. It's speculated Marion Marichal Le Pen, Marine Le Pen's niece, is eyeing up her aunt's job. A new scandal shows the party has considerable bloodletting left to do. Davy Rodriguez, deputy director of the National Front's youth wing, was suspended after a video emerged of him allegedly using racial slurs. A mixed forecast then, but the same leader for now. Marine Le Pen was elected to a new term as president at the Congress, the only candidate. Well, as we just saw, the name change is not pleasing everyone. Le Pen, first of all, has been accused of stealing the new name from another right-wing politician, and her father, as we just saw, is not happy. He has called the name change a political assassination. Let's take a listen to Jean-Marie Le Pen. It is more than just a name, more than just a group. It's a spirit. It has a story, a past, and to cast that aside seems disastrous to me. It doesn't add anything new, but the mere fact that it will no longer be called the National Front is a political assassination. Now, the guest star of the Congress was not uh, Le Pen, but rather Donald Trump's ex-senior advisor, Steve Bannon, who took the stage in the midst of a tour to galvanize European populist parties. And he urged the party faithful to keep up the fight. Let them call you racist. Let them call you xenophobes. Let them call you nativist. Wear it as a badge of honor. Because every day we get stronger and they get weaker. In other news, the French government plans to take Google and Apple to court. Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire has accused the U.S. tech giants of abusive business practices against smaller rivals, namely French startups. It's a sector that President Emmanuel Macron is trying to boost. That's right. Now, at issue is the power that Apple and Google have over app developers as the only major app distributors. When our developers make their applications and sell them to Google or Apple, prices are imposed on them. Google and Apple take the data. They have the power to modify contracts with developers unilaterally. It's unacceptable. That's not the economy we want. Well, now the stage is set for a showdown between President Macron and rail unions. The government wants to reform the national railways known as the SNCF. Now it's backed a bill to fast track through Parliament the biggest shakeup to the debt ridden service since it was nationalized in the 1930s. That's right, Molly. The government promising to keep the railways public. However, trade unions are gearing up for nationwide strikes. Emmanuel Macron has his work cut out for him. The French president is planning on making some big changes to SNCF, the state-owned rail company. Under the reforms, new railway workers would not be guaranteed the special status enjoyed by current employees, which provides job security and extra pension rights. Trains would undergo renovations to improve transport, and finally, the sector would be opened up to private competitors. But before the sector can be liberalized, the government must first give private operators the green light, a process that's been in the works since the early 2000s. Now the government is trying to speed things up. On Wednesday, the French transport minister assured workers that no law would pass without a debate. We're going to have two months of consultation and three months of parliamentary debate. But the opposition says actually there will be no debate. They're pretending there will be negotiations, but everything has already been decided. For a reform as sensitive as the SNCF, we need to have a proper debate. Trade unions are up in arms over the new measures, which they say threaten their workers. Rail workers have called for a strike next Thursday. Unions representing local Parisian transport said they're also calling for their workers to strike in solidarity meaning it could be a miserable day for commuters. The spat has drawn comparisons to similar strikes in 1995, 
which paralyzed the country. The backlash ultimately forced then Prime Minister Alain Juppé to go back on the reforms. The French President Emmanuel Macron is just back from a high-profile visit to India, during which he paid a so-called private trip to the Taj Mahal monument with his wife, Brigitte, of course, but also with a bunch of photographers and cameras. So at his final press conference, he was asked by a French reporter whether this was essentially a photo op, and this did not go down well with Emmanuel Macron. Let's take a listen to his reaction. Mr. President, could you give me your definition of the word private? Because yesterday there were lots of photographers and cameramen during your private tour of the Taj Mahal. I want to thank you for the relevance of your question. It shows just how much you've gained from this three-day visit to India. And it shows just how interested you are in the strategic issues and everything I've said so far. What I meant by that is that there would be no officials during the tour. Now, President Macron is known for controlling his image and for keeping media at arm's length. But that's not the case for Annie Leibovitz. Well, the president welcoming the American photographer to the Elysee Palace this week. The artist has shot the likes of John Lennon, Michael Jackson, Michelle Obama, as well as former French President Nicolas Sarkozy. Macron's photos will appear in an upcoming edition of Vanity Fair magazine. That's all we have time for this week. We'll see you next week here on The Political Brief. Indeed, we'll leave you with images now of President Macron's visit to India.